listen, Prince Harry's memoir, Spare, is on track to being the best-selling memoir of all time. Oh, we like that. Great. Okay, by now, most of us have probably had the time to dig in, or at least you've heard a lot about it. It is time for us to give our thoughts. So, Jess, what stood out to you in this memoir? Well, well first of all, I think a round of applause to the ghostwriter, J.R. Uh, Moringer. It was so well written, so well constructed, so well organized into three parts. That first part is sort of his earliest memories. He can't remember a lot before the age of 12. And then the middle part is his military time. And then the third part is when he meets Megan. And one of my favorite parts is from the first section when he remembers, I think it's the summer of 2001, where they go to Balmoral in the summer and there's this little cottage there in the Scottish Moorlands. And, and grandma, the queen, makes a salad dressing, is setting the table. Yep. Prince Philip is on the barbecue. He's giving the Queen Mama martini and teaching her how to do an impersonation of Ali G. Like, it's just like little moments like that were just so beautiful. Yeah. But then there, I will say that, and I, uh, someone, I can't remember, Rebe Rebecca Mead in The New Yorker, she wrote a nice review about this. And she, she hit the nail on the head for me. Sometimes it felt like, there was a little too much score settling so that he gets into the minutia of um, social media. And like the whole book, the thread is how terrible the press is. Don't read it, ignore social media. And then he just brings it up. He reprints like troll tweets. And even we know, don't do that, don't, you know, yeah, but he, he can't help himself. And mm. so there's a great deal of, um, it's, it's not necessarily a criticism. Like I, I felt sad. Essentially, yeah. that he can't, yeah. And I've been there too, so I could also really relate to that mm. behavior. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, time heals it, but he has not let go. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, the trauma was very, very evident, and I felt really, really sorry for him at times, and then also was kind of like, oh my goodness, like, yeah, you're concerned with sort of things that I can't relate to. During that part in the beginning, beginning though, it did strike me when he said that he had never hugged his granny. I think up until the age of 17, maybe beyond that, I'm mm -hmm. not sure. Um, I felt that Charles, sometimes I'm curious to know what your thoughts are. Charles came my off darling boy. to me, I, like doing his best with the awkwardness of his own life. Like he yeah. is trying. They're kind of caught, him and William to some degree, mm. are kind of caught in this, you know, no win situation, which yes. is that they have to uphold the stupid rules of the monarchy, which are so silly at times. And yet they also like feel bad and they love their brother. Um, anyway, the parts that struck me the most, I think were the parts that related to this city, um, which is when he was meeting up with Megan, uh, like kind of secretly. And did you know that right around the corner from here, there's a little place called Soho House. Soho House, there's several locations around the Your world. Private members club. Private members club. Mm -hmm. They actually, their very first date was at a Soho club in the UK. but. When Megan was living here and they started, you know, getting together a lot, he came here once for Halloween and they did an apocalypse themed um, yeah. <laughs> party. Uh, party. Yeah. And Tom Hardy is friends with uh, Harry and he borrowed his, his costume from Mad Max, which yeah. included an entire cover. And he went there along with one of uh, Fergie's daughters and they all hung out and nobody recognized them. Anyway, there were a whole bunch of little things <laughs> like that. Yeah, yeah. Really Juicy, cool. Juicy. Juicy and interesting. And that's the thing, like, it was so good for God. Gossip. Yes. yes. And like, you know, you if you are into royal gossip or royal details, it's good for that too. You were talking about Balmoral, and one of the details they talked about was how the bathwater is brown there. Yes. <laughs> Because it's natural, it comes from the field. It's or very something. pure. You can it's drink whatever. it. It is pure, but it's brown. That's what and, they say. <laughs> <laughs> and like he would describe every like nooks and crannies in the castle. So if you are a royalist, and because you're never getting in those places, <laughs> then it really was a slice of life in there. So it's really good for that kind of gossip. It's really great for the other kind of gossip, the family drama. It was, I mean, he is, he's kind of one of us. He notices small, weird details. What someone was wearing, lip gloss, he, he, he notices. The linen sheets. The Remember linen the sheets, yeah. yeah. He notices, I mean, if you asked Yasik, if I asked Yasik to describe a confrontation or, did you see that woman and how she looked at me? He'd be like, I don't know, what happened? Like, I was yeah. looking at the golf clubs over there. But Harry's able to describe when someone arches their eyebrows and grimaces and sneers. Like, he is really, really good for these petty details. little details that yeah. all we like to love to eat up. I, mm -hmm. I, I, I'm gonna, I loved, I ate it up so fast and I loved everything about it. 
For me, what really stood out is just how broken the relationship with William is. Mm -hmm. It really made me sad. I, 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 for the first time, thought it's almost going to be irreparable. Mm -hmm. I mean, it is so broken between the two of them that that I feel like that that brotherhood, whatever in our minds, that fantasy that we thought they could come back together after the Queen's passing, all, it ain't happening. Mm -hmm. It's just when you read it, you realize it's done. There's been some really bad blood sent both ways. I think generally speaking, regardless of how you feel about it, whether you're on team like Harry and Meghan or whether you're on team royal family, what I really love about this is that there is now an alternative narrative. You know, my father always says history was written by those who won. And when you look at all the history books in our schools, you don't get the other side. You don't mm -hmm. get the indigenous textbook. Mm -hmm. You don't get all the conquered people. And, and, and quite frankly, this is the lineage of the family that has conquered many corners, if not every corner of this world. And they get to write all the textbooks because they're the winners. Yeah. And here's what Harry's narrative, whether you believe him or not, doesn't matter. There is now in the annals yeah, of the history books point. going to be an alternative narrative. Whether William's take is totally different and Charles's take is what? totally different, it doesn't I, matter. I, I what agree. Do you think and I think matter? That, yeah, go ahead. I was just gonna say, what do you think about all the fact checking that that uh, people have been doing? Like little details that maybe are historically inaccurate. And I mean, I like I think that this is the fact checking is not gonna stand up to the fact that this is the what? the best-selling memoir in the yes. history of all time. <laughs> so, all time. I will say, though, yeah. I think beyond the gossip and all that, which is what all these headlines are about, what he, what he really does well, and I hope it's the legacy for him, is how he talks about how he went to get help for his mental health yeah. issues. Yeah. It's very, very detailed. Yep. He talks about yep. his therapy sessions. Yep. He talks about needing to cry. Yep. I do think that that will make a difference in those who are, seeker, uh, who are seeking mental health. I yep. hope so, because yeah. it's being spun right now by the the UK media, who really does have a, have a vendetta, it feels like, against well, they're them. Attacking they're attacking therapy, them. and they're yeah. attacking the culture of psycho, mm -hmm. what they call the cult of psychotherapy, yeah. which is disgusting. Yeah. yeah. It's clearly, a whole other said. topic. Yeah, he's it's a whole Next other week topic. on The Social. Next week on The Social. <laughs> hey there. Wasn't that great? Do you know where you can find some equally good content? Our YouTube page. It's filled with discussions, debates, and some laughs. Head there now. Like and subscribe.